Here we are at the Kibby Dome. That's right, the Kibby Dome, as I foreshadowed last week with the picture of the Kibby Dome. A very small dome located in western Idaho in a town called Moscow. Or Moscow, I don't know how they pronounce it up there. I'm going to pronounce it the way I want to. And we, the Jayhawks, are taking on the Idaho Vandals at their home stadium in front of a packed house. That was a joke. There was, like, nobody in the stands. These... <laughs> The stadium kind of, like, I, I would love to visit this stadium because it is just so much different than any other stadium in major college football. And just by the way, this here, big gain. By big gain, I mean touchdown. Two big stiff arms, one where he just knocks the guy over. Impressive. I'm proud of that. So anyway, we start at 7-0. That's the best way to start a game out, right? If a drive, uh, touchdown on the first drive, that's good. They start passing. Their passing offense is okay. Their quarterback is fairly good. Their run offense is a little bit better. Their offensive line is actually fairly good. So they're not a terrible team. They're 0-3 to start the season out, but you know what? We're 1-1, so what do we really know about each other yet? Basically nothing, uh, except that the d disparity in talent is going to be pretty obvious between a Big 12 team, and I believe this was at the time... I think they were in the whack. I don't know. <sighs> oh, that was a big uh, stiff arm there. That was pretty good. Anyway, so here we are just looking at trying to stop Idaho from getting the first down. They go for it on third and inches. I hang there too long before the snap. I don't know why I didn't edit that out. And then I thought I got him here with the helmet coming off. That was the first time. Uh, this was actually the first NCAA game where helmets came off. Uh, and so they happen all the time because they uh, I think just want to kind of show off to everybody that yes indeed our helmets come off in this game and it's rather impressive 7 to 0 Kansas at the end of the first quarter no real surprise there I mean, what is kind of surprising is the way they're just kind of gashing the defense here they get a first no they don't get a first down here they have to pass and I take back what I said about gashing the defense because that's an interception gift basically a gift wrapped pick six at the two-yard line, 98 yards. Quarterback just can't quite catch up, and that's the touchdown. 98 yards on the interception return. That's very, very nice. That's what we like to see. So it goes from a possible tie game, 7-0 to a or 7-7. If that had been a touchdown pass, which that very well could have been, and uh, instead goes 14 to zero, which is a much, uh, much better score in our favor and then plus the quarterback I don't know how great the uh, the AI in this game is on like being rattled or whatever but you gotta assume if there is momentum then the defense is probably charged up and the quarterback's probably not too happy but that's a good catch that's like the third game in a row a catch like that has been made I believe this was also one of the first uh, NCAA games to have catches like that the diving catch and the toe drag and stuff like that so that happens a lot as well. I don't mean like animations for those diving catches. They were probably around in the prior games, like the diving catch, but you just didn't see it. So the quarterback gets a run there. He gets up a little bit past midfield. Third and eight. And they uh, we come up with a stop. We didn't really come up with a stop, of course. There was just a dropped pass, basically. And this uh, was a mishandled punt. I either should have run back towards it earlier or just let them handle it because I lost like only two yards but still probably should have actually tried to recover it because there was a good enough coverage around that it might have actually worked out. <sighs> anyway one of the things you may have noticed in the first two videos that uh, the win over Iowa State in part came due to uh, Iowa State kept dropping passes uh, and you could blame that I don't again I don't know about the conditions or the uh, way that the game is affected by the weather conditions in this game it could be purely aesthetic based at least in terms of rain but if that is something that's factored in and I think it was I don't know if that was like in the promotional material but I believe they do make a point somewhere in the game where if it's raining the pass game might take a little bit of a hit uh, in terms of at least you know dropped passes and uh, they dropped a whole hell of a lot of passes in that game. Second game, of course, against Maryland had a very obvious win factor where, like, passes that were way overthrown suddenly ended up being caught and passes that should have been theoretically made suddenly ended up being way overthrown or way underthrown. This game does not have any of those weather-related issues because it is played in a big-ass, like, aircraft hangar sort of thing in western Idaho. 
You know, Idaho's biggest rival is considered to be uh, Washington State because they are just very close in proximity. That always, that I don't know if I'd say that surprised me, but I, I just never expected the Idaho-Washington State rivalry to be as a, I, don't, I wouldn't say heated as it is because I neither of those teams have, had, have been very good at the same time. Uh, in, at least in recent years, I'm sure there were times where they had pretty good games. I don't know if they even play, if they even play that much. I don't know why I brought it up uh, because I know literally nothing on the subject. I do know though, that's an interception, and he outrun that uh, lineman there almost another. Well, not even almost a pick six because they did eventually come in and uh, cash or er, and uh, crash into him. But cr crash really isn't the word to. I fixed myself and then used a word that also didn't really make sense. So this weekend is the first weekend, that's right, the first weekend of the year for college football. And I am excited. I'm genuinely very excited. Handoff here. This goes for a touchdown, however it is. No, it's not called back. Oh, shit. I may have just accidentally spoiled something that happens. Spo spoiled something, not spoiled something that happens later on in the episode. Stay tuned, kids, to find out what exactly that is. My passing game just not working for Idaho. Really not all that much working for Idaho until uh, it's just about too late. That was a good uh, deflection there by 39. He could have been the player of the game defensively had there not been, well, I mean, just the player in game in general had number 11 not had such a great day on the ground. Which is funny because, you know, you're in a dome, you expect your passing game to really take over. But you know what? I'll let the ground game take over. That's fine. I'm happy with that get up within the 10 yard line and this one goes for a touchdown but it really doesn't because it gets called back for a holding and so we get the ball from the 15 and then number 11 I guess is too fatigued to go out there understandable number 30 comes in he's a freshman he ended up being one of the uh, better rushers in the program's history him and another freshman at the time Canadian fans uh, he was a fret I don't know if he's even in this game roar number 29 Canadian football fans might know him John Cornish as one of the best uh, rushers in the Canadian Football League. Of course, number 30 was Clark Green, who had a, a couple of very good seasons, 2003, 2004, 2005. Uh, this was one very good play for him, the uh, Idaho running back, but I just missed a bunch of tackles. So anyway, yeah. They get the ball from the five. <laughs> we stop him on that run. Once they go back to pass, though, Okay, we'll have to do another run because I edited way too many failed plays into this game. That's a touchdown. They're pumped up about it, and you know what? Good for them. And you know what they go and do? That's right, they go for the two-point conversion, and you know what? Good for them. That was a pretty good slant, actually, over the middle there. Nice. Very nice. Kansas gets the ball back, cannot capitalize on the third and five, and so in my own paranoid state, I think it's eight to 24. That's only really a true touchdown game. Might as well go for the fake punt. I should have like a theme or an alarm for whenever the fake punt happens because I do it all the time. But yes, I did just do a fake punt in the fourth quarter up by about three scores. This could have been a touchdown had I not juked twice accidentally because uh, of the Xboxes. Uh, triggers, very sensitive, but you know what, whatever. Blame the controller, that's what all good players do. And number 11 almost had another touchdown, but then a just giant run, knocking over everybody. Three people left in his wake, number 84, the fullback. And he makes it effectively out of their hands, even though it was really pretty much out of their hands to begin with. It was 31-8. to eight. And the player of the game was number 11 for the KU uh, offense, the running back. Trying to get him, as I said last week, over a thousand yards. I am actually definitely on track to do that, so that's good. <sighs> and we kind of just, well, we get that interception. We kneel down on the ball, and that is the end of it. I will see you guys around. It's 31 to 8. Thank you for watching. Just get ready for this year of college football. I am very excited for it. I'm pumped up. I'm looking forward to just having a really good, uh, fun year watching a lot of uh, just fun games. It's going to be an interesting year. Last year was really interesting, and I have no reason to believe that this year won't be interesting because that's just, you know, the nature of college football is that something weird, something chaotic, something strange, upsets, all that stuff happens every year. And you know what? I wouldn't like it any other way. If, you know, if nobody that was expected to lose... One, you know, that would be boring. So, you know what? I'm happy about that. I'm going to stop saying you know, and I will see you guys later. Thank you for watching.